And the unit for the magnetic field is? Um, that just has a name. That just has a name, sorry? It just has a name? Yeah. So we don't need to break it down into component units. We just have to have memorized what the name is for the unit for magnetic field. So that's Tesla. Poor Tesla, no one remembers it. <laughs> okay, what's the point of getting the unit named after yourself? All right, yeah, no one remembers it. All right, so here we have the uh, Tesla here. All right, so that's the uh, magnetic field. Now, remember that, um, what is light? Well, remember that it is just basically uh, electric and magnetic fields inducing each other. The light is coming from the mutual uh, induction from the electric and magnetic fields. So there should be a relationship between how strong the electric and magnetic fields are and the intensity of the light. And that's the Poynting vector. By the way, we should remind ourselves, which of the concepts on the board are vectors? Um, force. And pressure. It would seem like it, because it's based on the force. But really, it's just based on the magnitude of the force. So it's actually not a vector. Well, I think this is it. Now, the Poynting vector is a, uh, obviously, the Poynting vector is a vector. Intensity is not a vector because it's just the magnitude of the Poynting vector. So the S here is just for intensity. That's just the magnitude. But the Poynting vector itself, so I'll put uh, P O Y for Poynting vector. Obviously, that's a vector. So um, let's do a little uh, sample problem there. If the electric field is 5 newtons per coulomb in the negative x direction, and the magnetic field is 8 tesla in the y direction, no, let's say in the z direction, in the positive z direction, let's calculate the pointing vector. It seems like he would give you that on the test. Yeah. So mu zero is four pi times 10 to the negative seven. That's also on the inside front cover of your book. Uh, it has big complicated units, but we won't worry about that. The number is four pi times 10 to the negative seven. That didn't come out so good. Okay. All right, so that's. scientific notation. Z, good. And then so the vector would be the direction of my thumb, which is upwards, so positive. If we take this going upwards, positive one. Yeah, so I was kind of assuming here. Normally, these are the axes that we would use. 
we usually take x, positive x is to the right, positive y is up, and positive z is out of the board. All right, uh, and now the key thing here is this is not a multiplication, this is a cross product, a vector cross product. So we have to remember that in a vector cross product, the first thing points in the direction of your fingers, and the second thing points in the direction of your palm, and then the cross product is in the direction, so we can put this in your notes. So we have, if you've got C equals A cross B, which way does your fingers point? And then your palm, and then your thumb, which is C, or A cross B, whichever you wanted to call that. Uh, now, there's many different versions of the right hand rule that would work, but I think this is the one in your textbook. This is the one we talked about before, so this is good enough. All right, and we talked about it makes a big difference that you have to write the E first. Right, you couldn't say that the, so you can't write down that the pointing vector is B cross E, because B cross E would mix up the fingers and the palm. So this is not commutative like we talked about. You've got to put the E first always in the formula. It doesn't matter what order you multiply 5 and 8, but it makes a big difference who you put in the fingers and who you put in the palm. So let's make sure you got that right. I think so. So the fingers here, the electric field were pointing to the left, and your palm was pointing out of the board, positive Z. Um, so yeah, then my thumb is pointing up, that's the positive y, and that should be the pointing vector. Okay, good. So I actually have seen quite a bit of sample test questions that we're testing that, so that's good to know. So to wrap up here, what are the units on our pointing vector? Um, that would be newtons times tensile over small. Ah, yeah. Well, first of all, I didn't tell you the units from mu zero. Yeah. So you can't use this equation. These are very complicated units. Um, the best way to focus on that is, what, what, does, what, what concept does S measure? Remember, S is intensity. Mm -hmm. And what are the units for intensity? Uh, watt over meter squared. Yeah, we wouldn't want to try to figure out the units from this equation. Uh, this turns out to be too complicated. Um, but we just know by definition that intensity is watts per square meter. So since we put in standard units, this should come out in standard units. So how would we interpret this? What's this telling us? Um, for one meter squared area, it'll exert that much power. Yeah, one square meter of area would absorb this much power. Well, uh, 3.18 centimeters of power. Power from whom? The sun. Or whatever, or whatever wh whoever is generating this electromagnetic yeah. radiation. So the point is, again, the pointing vector is telling us the intensity of the power from electromagnetic radiation. The whole point of the pointing vector is to tell us the intensity of the power from electromagnetic radiation. And how would we interpret this? What's this telling us? That's positive. <laughs> um, Remember, that's a direction. Positive y. What about the upward direction? So remember, this is the intensity of the power from this electromagnetic radiation. This tells us what direction the electromagnetic radiation is moving in. So this tells us the direction the electromagnetic radiation is moving in. So we know that this radiation is moving up the board. So if we had, say, uh, a laser that was generating the electromagnetic radiation, if my uh, chalk holder was the laser, the laser must be oriented like this. The laser must be oriented so that it goes this way. So that's why the pointing vector is a vector. It has a direction because we'd like to know what direction is the radiation going in. It doesn't do any good to have all this intensity if it's not pointing in the direction of your solar panels. You want to make sure it's pointing in the right direction. So the pointing vector, its magnitude tells you the intensity of the radiation, and the direction tells you just what direction the, the, the light wave is moving in. We, we already know from that chapter that the direction of propagation of the wave is perpendicular to the electric and magnetic fields. The, the direction that the electric field is oscillating is perpendicular to the direction that the magnetic field is oscillating, and they're both perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. That's why this is a transverse wave. Um, but that, so it should have been obvious this would be in the y direction. The thing that wasn't obvious was whether it would be plus y or negative y, and that's where we need the right hand rule to uh, work this out over here. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, an important idea. So the pointing vector here would give us this. And then what could you do from this? Well, once you know the intensity, then you can start figuring out power or radiation pressure or whatever. So the problem that we saw was it could have been harder. They could have started with the electric and magnetic fields. Okay. Um, so I'll erase this. 
One other point that I've seen tested a lot is a relationship between the electric and magnetic fields E equals CV. The electric field equals the speed of light times the magnetic field. So notice, they don't have to tell you both E and B to let you find the pointing vector. They could tell you just B. And then you could use that to find E, and then you could find the pointing vector. In fact, that would be a lot more elegant. So you really only need one of these things. This is for electromagnetic radiation. For electromagnetic radiation, there's this relationship between these things. OK, so maybe the flowchart is getting complicated enough now. But uh, this, these would all be good things to, to have the relationship about here in the chart. Okay.